everybody, my name is Joseph Prepper. I'm also known as Miss Cali G. I am a drag artist, singer, actor sometimes, not recently, but that's a thing as well. And I am here because I have a New Year's resolution to create a sewing YouTube series. I have some inspiration to do so. So first I'll talk a little bit about that. I got into sewing YouTube. I saw a video that Bernadette Banner did about some company had uh, copied her work and was selling it for super cheap. And that just got me down the rabbit hole. And for some reason, I don't realize that YouTube is more than just silly videos sometimes. <laughs> I've always been interested in sewing. I've been sewing since I was young in 4-H and I have continued to do so now that I'm an adult needing to make costumes for my drag artistry. I, I started watching Bernadette Banner and then I watched lots more different types of people. Just because Bernadette Banner is such a um, smart person and knows so much about the work that she's working on, I felt like that I was completely out of my depths. I didn't know what I was doing with sewing. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm just a, a puny amateur compared to some of the people in the world. And that is true. That being said, I have also been inspired by other people like Makara Tours and Rachel Maxey. And the reason why I felt like I could do something like this is because, especially Rachel Maxey specifically, she goes into a project with the mindset that she wants to make something so bad that any apprehension to not do it is completely dissuaded. And at the end, she wraps up and talks about the things she likes and the things she would like to improve on. And I really like that mentality. And I think that I could do the same thing. The other reason that I thought that I could do this is because I create costumes for myself. I'm not really a cosplayer. I do drag outfits. And <laughs> that is not something that I see any other drag queens doing. Aside from like James Mansfield, she did a couple of things in the past. I don't see a whole lot of tutorials for things other than drag makeup. And I don't really feel like I have anything to add to that conversation. <laughs> my face is my face. I have the same face pretty much every time. So that, that's whatever. But sewing, I have really gotten into over quarantine. And I feel like it looks like we're going to be here for a little bit longer. So I make a outfit or a or sew something completely new every month it seems with my reading time with the queens appearances and i thought that it would be a good time to start sharing those with you in a youtube format so why don't you come along with me that's my little intro to this new series of videos we'll see how it goes today is november 23rd no today is november 29th it is two days until the beginning of December and I have finally gotten my apartment decorated. I put some Christmas decorations up. You might be able to see those. I am a little bit behind on making a outfit for the Reading Time at the Queen's holiday special. I have about two weeks to get this done. Um, we are going to see how it goes and I will show you what I'm gonna start with. So basically I had this idea to make a dress very like uh, warm, walking through winter wonderland, but I didn't want to do like green or red. I've done green and red in the in the past and that's just, you know, the standard Christmas colors. So I decided to go with purple. While I was at the store, I found this very grayish purple plush fleece type stuff. It says on the packaging, not recommended for children's sleepwear, which I feel like means that it is not <laughs> It's probably not for garments either. I bought it anyways, because I am known for using fabrics that should not be used for outfits normally. I do think that I'm going to need to make a lining for this. So we will see what happens. It is very, very warm. And yes, I'm, I'm nervous that there is going to be a lot of sweat. If I do not put a lining layer in, but we will see what happens. I'm going to accent it with this faux fur. Um, this is also all plasticky stuff. All of this stuff is made out of plastic. 
but um, this is what we have at the Joanne Fabric in Pocatello, Idaho. So I'm gonna um, accent it with this fur, this white fur. I feel like this will give it a very winter vibe. I was thinking about what type of dress I wanted to make. I wanted it because of the accents to have some stuff on the collar, on the cuffs, and I was gonna make um, like a, a muff and also a hat, like that was my big thing. And I found this pattern, I had to order it in because it was not at the Joanne, but I found this pattern. It had pretty much everything I like. See, it has this, this collar that I was wanting and also the longer sleeves. I also wanted to do a circle skirt for this. I was pretty bent on that, but I found this pattern and I think I'm gonna follow it mostly like this. If I'm doing this more pencil skirt shape, I can do more fur towards the bottom too. And I think this will just be a very classic look, nothing too spectacular. But yes, that is the basic concept. So let's get into what we need to do to make the dress. <sighs> Hello. So I might have said earlier the word tutorial. I really shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> this is not going to be a tutorial. I can't teach you how to do this. Uh, I don't even feel like I know how to do this. There's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, I'm just not qualified. Second of all, this pattern is similar to a lot of the ones that I use, but very different in that it has this kind of like way that you can adjust it. There's all these extra lines you can uh, use to make sure that the, the back is, you know, this, I don't know, anyways. So like all these lines are right, he right here. I know you probably can't see very well, but there's all these other little lines right here that are completely foreign to me and I don't understand what is going on. So um, mostly I'm here to tell you that I am using a pattern, which you saw, and I have been finding a lot of success lately using a size 20 in like McCall's, even Simplicity is good for this. I just do a size 20 and then if I need to take it in, I take it in. But I have broader shoulders than most women that these are being fitted for and that causes some issues. So I just make sure that I um, am a si sizing up for that measurement specifically. And then I go in and um, bring it in at the waist or wherever else I need to do it. So. That is the plan, and I will leave you to some B-roll of me cutting out some pattern pieces. Y'all, okay, so <clears throat> my birthday is in December and so is Christmas and my grandmother knows, cause she's, she's one of the people that taught me how to sew. She knows that I like sewing and all this stuff cause I share like my sewing projects with her and stuff. And look what she got uh, me for my birthday. It's a dress form. So guess what we're gonna be using? for this project, this. I'm very excited about that. Uh, let me unbox it and we can, we are, I'll show it to you. Okay, so I got the dress form all figured out. Well, 
mostly. I don't have anything to really report at this time except for that I read on the reviews there were a lot of people that had problem with these little hand cranky thingies um, because they're very tough and I did have to break out some gloves in order to finally uh, use them. So that was weird. I have it all to my my measurements and hopefully that will help a great deal and I'm gonna see about getting it a little bit higher and then I'm just gonna start cutting out some stuff tonight. I have about two weeks to get this done but I only really have like the evenings of those days except for the weekend to like work on it so yeah that's my schedule <laughs> Hello. So as I'm doing this, I'm noticing that this is the type of fabric that if you like groom it a certain way, it looks really nice. But then if you go against that grain, it does one of these things. I don't know. So you like do one of these and it gets all kind of disrupted. So I am taking note of this and to my best of my ability, I'm going to see about making sure that we cut this so that that is always going down on my body. So this is the bodice front piece. And then what you do with this is just, it says center front and fold, put it here, pin it down and then cut it out. That way when I cut it out and put it on my body, it would go in that way. And just like that, that is the piece, the pattern piece. I cut out these little notches where the notch is supposed to be. And yeah, it's one, just one piece. Because I'm doing the lining, there's only five pieces that I need to cut out of this fabric. I'll have to do the same pieces in the lining fabric, which I have yet to buy. But then the other thing that I'll have to do is the collar is gonna be out of the white and then I have to improvise the other pieces with the fur. So we'll get there when we get there. Also, just as a note, I I used to throw away fabric and I don't anymore. I keep it all in this box right here. So any like fabric scraps, because here's the thing. I used to keep a bunch of fabric and then I realized, oh my gosh, I have a bunch of fabric scraps with not enough fabric to do anything. So I started keeping the fabric that I would think that I had stuff to do with in there. Anything that's not substantial, I just put in this box. You can also probably tell what else I've been making in there. Anyways, you can use this scrap somehow. You just don't know how yet. If you can't use it, someone else will. And if anything, you can cut it up and use it as stuffing or something. So. How do people do this in one day? Not me, this is day three. This is me sewing darts into things. So that's what a dart looks like. Oh, and there's some puckering at the bottom. So what you do is you take these two little strings at the end and you tie them off. Let me go like that. I don't like doing a whole bunch of darts. It's not my favorite thing to do. So I try not to mess them up because it's really sad when you mess them up. This is a really forgiving material though. So there you go, it looks a little bit better now. And that's the back panel. And then we still got one more to do. That's what it ends up looking like. And then you sew through them and they become darts. Hi again, it's another day. I, if I haven't mentioned yet, 
I am not following the pattern actually very much. <laughs> On this, this is the bodice piece, okay? It's just like, you know, there's the shirt essentially. There is a pattern piece that goes around like the neck and the arm hole. And essentially, there's just kind of like little flaps. So you basically sew around so that it has a nice clean edge and then you kind of just like tack it down and that's that's like as far anything that goes as far as like a lining. But there's no actual lining that is called for in this project. I'm putting a lining in for a couple of reasons. First, I want to. Second, because it is very nice and wonderful and soft and fuzzy fabric and I did a little bit of fitting on myself it looked like it would it's gonna work out um, also I was using my model here it was very nice the fabric against my skin is just it probably would be really comfortable but also might make me very hot so that's why we're doing some lining layer with a garment lining. So what I'm gonna do now is take this and I'm actually gonna put on the sleeves now so that I can put the lining on in a certain way and I'll show you that in a little bit. Hi everybody, it's me, Joseph. Okay, so today is the Saturday before reading time so I have less than a week to get everything done. What time? My clock broke, so I don't have a clock on my wrist anymore. But, let me put my glasses. Here we go. Um, I'm just sitting here sewing. I, I showed you the bodice earlier, and then so I just made the same thing in lining. Dun, 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 dun. This is the lining, this is like a garment lining. Um, the idea, like I said, is it's gonna flip over and it's gonna be the inside lining. I tried this on by itself and it was too small. <laughs> Well, who would have thought? Like, why are you doing this? But um, what I did is I tried it on. There's such like, there's so much seam allowance here on the sides that I just um, seam ripped that and then gave me more space on the sides. So it should be fine. It'll just, it should line up just fine. Um, and then I kind of let a little bit of stuff down here at the bottom of the sleeve where it was causing me a little bit of trouble. I know that the functionality in this dress is not going to be like super great, but it, um, it will work. I'm sure that it will work. And if not, then we will learn something yet again about using this type of fabric and a dress, this type of dress. Okay. Right now, this is um, this is one of the back panels for the skirt. I'm just putting some darts in them. And then um, I'll do the same thing for another lining layer on the inside. Well, pending. I'm gonna see if the lining layer is actually gonna work for the, the inside, but we'll see. Maybe I might scrap that, who knows. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I'll uh, attach that to the actual dress and we will go from there. Okay, update. Since today's Saturday, so I'm doing a lot. Okay. Essentially, um, I got the skirt lining done. Where is that? I got the skirt lining done and um, here's the thing. I know this about this material. I know I've already said this, but it's not stretchy. And when I pair it with a stretchy material, my goal is to, like I said before, in this case, not only to have like a lining that's gonna make sure I'm not having so much skin contact and cause me to sweat, yada, yada, yada. But also it gives it, um, structure but the thing about that is is that <laughs> it's not stretchy so i can't expect it to do the same thing that this is going to do when i actually put it on my body i made narrower seam allowances so it's literally it's just this it's literally like n basically next to the edge of the foot i did put it around myself it fits fine i it will fit a zipper and all that good stuff so that's fine um that being said there's a little um there's like a slit in the back this um, this piece is supposed to be folded over so there's like a, a slit in the back when you're walking and you, you know, it basically like gives you some room to walk so it's not just like a little skirty skirt. So that's what I'm figuring out right now. I will get back to you once I have a solution. And just like that, I have pinned the lining to the inside of the skirt. Now, I won't get too detailed on this, but I know that this is kind of antithetical. Like, why would you do this? It's just gonna be a weird raw edge when you sew it to the bodice. 
Never fear, my plan is to take the bodice piece and use this. I'm basically gonna have to hand sew it in to uh, hide this, this ugly edge. But see, I just like pinned it on if it pretty much perfectly and um, I think it should look good once I get it sewed. So let's see if that's true. <laughs> it is a lining inside. I did iron this before I put it in. I just wanna let you know there's a lining inside of the skirt, it's beautiful. I think the lining might actually be a little bit longer than the skirt, which doesn't make any sense. Hold on. No. No. Maybe a little bit? What's up with that? Okay, so... <gasps> Hi. <laughs> I should have... You can't even see. I, so I'm wearing it right now. I do have a zipper on. I can't get it all the way zipped up, but whatever. There are some points... This is what I'm going to say about this. There are some points when you get to a certain point in your project and you're like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Because right now I feel like I look like a lady at the lake is teaching a class <laughs> in an off purple comfy sweater dress. It's a, uh, it's certainly covering my body. Um, what I think I don't like the most is that it's too big here. But again, that is why I have a lining layer and I'm hoping that when I put it in um, and install that, it will give it some structure. Okay, yes, it does give it structure, but it ends up being a complete mess. So don't listen to a single thing that I say. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that you know that I'm being absolutely mad. And then also, what am I doing right now? I'm putting on the lining layer over the dress. Stop! Good morning. It is the next morning. It is Sunday, the Sunday before I have to have this done. And I am getting to the next step, which I need to attach a collar. So here we are. This is the fur fabric or the, fo the faux fur. You don't really want to go in with scissors on the fur because you'll cut the fur itself. So what you have to do is take an X-Acto knife, basically like carve out the back that the fur is on. On this pattern piece, there's a thing for a grain line and you're supposed to have that be like with the grain. But, and like I could figure out like, this is technically like the edge of the, the, the fabric, but it's not really like a grain line. This is going to be the inside of the neck edge. So all the fur as I have it laid right now will be coming out on my neck. So that's how we have it set up right now. I took the two little panels and I put them together and I sewed them together and I did a real s small uh, seam allowance at the end here so that I could allow all the long stuff to, to uh, still come out and like, spread out like this and you can't even really tell where the seam is like you have to I it's hard for me to even peel it back but there's the seam right there. And then what you gotta do is flip it over, so along this side, and then I'll put it on the collar, on the neck hole. Okay, so I just put the lining in the in the dress, and here is me in it. Hold on. Just put the lining in the dress. I'm wearing it. I'm rather less impressed with the bunching here, and that's caused due to the lining that I just hand sewed in. There are a couple of just like bumps that I couldn't get. Uh, it to uh, match up with because it's a little bit less thick. So a couple things, I might just take the L and it's just gonna look like this and I'll smooth it out <laughs> in post <laughs> or something. Or I was putting on some belts or Jody said that I might like put on some- uh, Sash. Like a little sash, bow. something like that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so that's where we're at right now. It is a very, I'm very tired on this Sunday evening, but I'm gonna finish like the sleeves and the bottom and get the hat and everything else ready. And yeah, that's where we're gonna be at. I'm feeling very chaotic today. And I knew that I was gonna be doing this, but I just, I started in on this dress, <laughs> this part of the dress without really filming it. So I have now like shaved off the ends of the sleeves 
to make sure that I can substitute this amount of length with that fabric. And I'm just doing the calculations on that now. The, the bottom of the dress is gone now and not the whole bottom, just just a part of it, um, just like a, a, a sliver, so that I can do the fur at the bottom now too. So maybe I'll get some shots of that. I don't know why, but when I put on this collar, I didn't have any trouble getting the um, collar to go on. It was just fine. Everything was nice. It was happy. It's on, it was on. It's on. It's it it's it's good tailoring. Okay. When I put this uh, trim around the bottom, however, my machine does not like it. It says no. It says that is against God's will and it's against my will and it won't work. So guess what I'm doing now? I'm hand sewing it all. I've gotten about that much done and I have about this much to do. I'm asking for your, your prayers, your hopes and, and prayers because this, this has been, this is causing me some sleepless nights. And here we are on the final day of me making this dress. I've actually finished the dress. The dress is done. Now I need to do the hat. I was gonna make like a muff. It's not happening. As far as reading time goes, we're having a little bit of a thing going on where I'm having to restructure the way that we were gonna do it, but that's okay. And I just need to get this hat done so I can focus on other things. I found this great tutorial that I'm gonna link on the video. Her channel name is Stitchless. She's very vibrant. So I'm following her tutorial. I have my little lining pieces here. I'm going to start sewing them together and then I will show you me sewing together the fur pieces like she said that you should. If you follow her tutorial, she's way better at explaining it than I could ever try. Mm. Here's the moment of truth, y'all. <sighs> Hello. It, I'm gonna finish getting this, uh, the inside of the lining done, but then I'm going to show you what I look like in drag in this dress. Here we go. Woo!
That's Miss Barb. Say hey, Miss Barb. Hey. Hi, and this is Miss Vivian. Say hey, Miss Vivian. Hey. Yeah, she looks very nice too. Uh, we got this at the Ross dress for less. She looks like a Christmas goddess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Christmas Show them your little pearls. Christmas green. Pearls on her barrettes and those pearls on her necklace. Yeah, so I got this project done. Um, turned out pretty much how I was expecting. I wanted it to turn out. I still wish that this wasn't bunching here, but I think that the belt helped hide that nicely. I'm feeling like like a Russian Christmas fantasy in here. And I do like how in the back, oh. it kind of splits open a little bit. Yeah, I'll post some more photos and link them to my Instagram. And uh, yeah, you can see more of this look and uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> this is gonna be my first uh, sewing YouTube video. Thank you for watching. Bye. Say bye, Miss Barb. Goodbye. Say bye, Miss Vivian. Bye. Bye, Miss Vivian. Bye.